Hey, what's up? It's Andrew here from Offshore Audio, helping you out with tips and tricks for being a better live sound engineer or getting started in your live sound engineering journey. I've had a few requests to take a look at using matrices to split your mix into separate outputs for tops and subs. I thought I would make a tutorial video for you and show you how to go about doing that. We'll start off by talking a little bit about what matrices are and why we're going to use a matrix, why it's a good idea to use one. And then we'll dive into the demo and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna go about that. What are matrices? Essentially, they are another form of mix bus, right? They're another place where you can collect a group of signals, mix them together, and then send them on to another output. Previously, they were sort of thought of as a mix of mixes. So on analog consoles, you would only be able to collect your mix buses or your groups and mix them into a matrix to send them further on to an output, as opposed to auxiliary sends, which you could use to collect inputs. You could mix separate microphones and send them out of one output. You could add little bits of each microphone to one mix and then send it to a monitor on the stage. Nowadays, with digital mixers, the functionality is almost exactly the same. So the definition between a matrix and an auxiliary send is quite blurred. You know, on Yamaha mixers, for example, they just call them mixes and matrices. So it's not even auxiliary sends. What's more, you can send these matrices wherever you want. You know, it doesn't have to be a dedicated physical output on the back of the mixer anymore. You can even send them on to effects units if that's what you wanted to do. So why should we consider using them? It gives us more control over where the signal is going and how much of it is going to certain places. In this video, we're gonna look at splitting the tops and the subs, right? And so we can use matrices to decide how much of our mix is going to our tops and how much of it is going to the sub. So that alters how the sound is in the room. Picture this, you're at a show, you're mixing a band. Once the audience has all come in, they've completely changed how the room sounds, haven't they? And suddenly you find yourself lacking either tops or sub and you're sitting there thinking, man, I really wish I had more sub energy in this room, more bass, but I don't have time now that the band's on to run up to the stage and turn up the amplifier. But if you've used matrices to split that up, you can just push a fader up on the mixer and immediately get more sub. You're sending more sound to the amplifier that's driving the subs. Another really cool way of using them is to create a really simple crossover. If you have, for example, passive subs and tops and a amplifier, no DSP, no crossover, you can engineer that crossover in the matrices and then send that so that the correct speakers get the correct frequency ranges. Enough about that. Let's have a look at the mixer and see how we set that up. So normally when we're mixing, right, we use these faders here to send the sound out, don't we? We expect to turn up our fader here, and as long as our master is up, we expect that we will hear sound. But there is another way of doing it. We want to send a copy of the sound both to the main tops on one fader and to the subs on another fader. And that way we can balance how much top and how much sub we have in our mix. So how do we go about doing that? Well. We keep sending to our main left and right mix. And what we do is we take the sound from our left and right mix, and then we send it to matrices. So that we're gonna send an equal quantity of sound from our input channels to our stereo mix, from our stereo mix to the matrices. And then these each will have their own output. So we can send to the tops and to the subs individually. First of all, we want to configure these, and this might be different depending on what mixer you're using. But here on this Yamaha QL1, I'm going to go to setup, bus setup. In the matrix tab, I will change my first pair to a stereo pair, and I'll just keep the third matrix and all the other ones as mono right now. And so hopefully you'll see now that the first two are linked together. And that's great because generally we want our sound to come out in stereo, don't we? So I'll just quickly rename these. Now that we've done that, we need to work on getting the sound from this place here, this main stereo mix, into these matrices. Again, this can vary depending on how your mixer works. But on this Yamaha QL1, I select my stereo left and right. I select the matrix tab. And then up here 
on matrix one and two, you can see here it's on a stereo. So one side is the balance and the other side is the quantity. It says here main. So I just select this tab, this dial here, and then I can turn that up to zero, which means that the exact same quantity that is reaching this fader is being sent further on to the main stereo faders here, the main matrices. I'll do the same with the sub matrix. Great, there is another piece of the puzzle though. We need to set the outputs, don't we? So select your matrices. This is the mains. And I'm gonna change the output to the main outputs on the back of this desk. The main left right was previously on seven and eight. So I'll just substitute that with these matrices. So send that to seven and send the second one to eight. And then I'll send the sub to six because I've got six available. And that's what I've connected the sub to. So left, right on seven and eight, sub is on six on the back of this mixer here. And I have changed these matrices to correspond to those outputs. There's one final thing we need to do. We need to stop the sound coming directly from this stereo left, right fader mix, whatever you want to call it. We need to stop it from going directly to the speakers because that's what happened before, right? So we're going to select it. We're going to open it up and we're just going to tap on these outputs to remove it. So now this does not, this stereo left right fader does not route directly to any output. I need to tap it twice to remove both the left and the right outputs. So hopefully what we'll see now is that when I turn up this fader, we still have tops and sub and it's still controlled by our master fader. So we can just mix as normally. If you have a visiting engineer or anything, you can mix as normally. But when you're setting up, or if you want to fine tune things, you can go to the matrix, right? And I'm gonna take out the sub. So now hopefully you hear that music and you'll see that I have independent control of the sub, if you hear that, and the mains. And I can choose just how much of each I want to send in. So when I've found a balance that I think works, I can forget about it and I can just go back to mixing normally and my master fader still works. But here's another great use for them, delays. If you have a pair of delayed speakers somewhere down a hall, you can use a matrix to independently EQ and delay those lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up just another stereo pair of matrices in the same way I did before, going to bus setup matrix and I'll turn five and six into a stereo pair this time. So now you can see that five and six are set to a stereo pair. I'm just gonna rename these quickly. So I've just called them hall. And in the same way that we did before, we'll take our stereo mix and we'll send that to the hall matrix. Then we need to go into the, mat the actual matrix itself and choose where that comes out from. To keep it simple, let's just say that we're gonna have it come out on output one and two on the back of this mixer. You could of course have this come out of a stage box on the stage. So now it's set to one and two coming out on the back of this mixer. I don't have any delay speakers hooked up, but the principle remains the same. If I turn this up, you will see that the sound is appearing here on the meters. So now I've sent another copy of the sound, the main mix, which goes to the stereo left and right. I've sent a copy from there now to these two labeled hall for my delay lines. I've also selected outputs one and two on the back of this mixer. Now I need to delay those outputs. I'll get into the actual technique of delaying stuff in a future video, but for now, I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So in this mixer, I'll go to output port. I'm pretty sure it's a similar process on most mixers. You need to find the output or the settings for the output that you're going to be using on your delay lines. So you can see here, I've got Omni 1 and Omni 2, output 1 and 2 on the back of this mixer. It says here, matrix 5, hall, matrix 6, hall. So I know that it's the right outputs here that are taking sound from these matrices. And I can just turn the delay on and then I can dial in the delay actually just using the distance here, it's set to just meters. So say it's 20 meters. I just set both of them to 20 meters. 
And then I can use these faders here to dial in how much of the delay that I want. Okay, so let's look back at that then. What was our objective here? We want to be able to mix as normal to the master fader and have that still govern our whole mix. What we're doing then is we're changing where the master fader goes. No longer does it send sound out of a physical output on the back of the mixer to amplifiers, speakers, whatever. Now it sends it internally to these matrices that we have set up, which then are going further on to their respective speakers. The tops going to the tops, the subs going to the subs. So essentially what we are doing is we are using that master fader as a sort of subgroup. We're mixing into this subgroup and then that subgroup, the master fader, is moving on to the actual master faders that control the volumes of the speakers. It's important to remember that the functionality of how you execute this will differ from mixer to mixer, but the principle remains the same. Though you might have to press different buttons or dials to get your master fader to go to those matrices, you still are aiming for the final result of master fader working as a subgroup, not going to outputs, but sending on to the matrices, and then the matrices are sending on to the outputs. Now I've kept this pretty simple and I've neglected some information here for the purpose of just showing you how to set up. I have assumed that there is a crossover further down the line, that we have some sort of amplification and that when the frequencies arrive at the speakers, they will have been correctly filtered so that everything works as intended. We'll get into that, how one does that in another video. People tend to use matrices as zone controllers. So they'll split them up into tops, subs, front fills, side fills, delays. You could even get more advanced and use subgroups to feed those matrices. It's a bit advanced. We'll get into that in another video. What's important, the important takeaway here is that they are really useful and it benefits you as an engineer to know how to use them. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below where you can download presets that I've made for various digital mixers. And in these presets, I will have set up the matrices as you saw me do in the video. And that way you can have a look at them and sort of reverse engineer the process or alter it, or even use it if you're in a pinch and you just wanna get used to the idea of it. And I'll treat this as a sort of work in progress. I'll add new mixers as I get my hands on them and create new presets. You can grab that link down in the description below. Now I want to hear from you. How do you use matrices when you're mixing? Do you split your subs and tops? Do you use them to split all these different zones? Do you not? I'd love to hear from you. Please tell me how you go about using them or what you would like to get done using matrices. If you enjoyed this video, if you got a lot of value from it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It tells YouTube that I'm not a bad guy and it also tells me that you would like to see more of this kind of content, whether that's tutorials or just information. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.